Hey guys, thanks for coming on to the Tagman channel. Well, I bought that F-150 at the sale a couple weeks ago. Finally broke down and bought a motor for it. Ain't she a beauty. So, you pull the yards up in New York State. That explains most of this rust and corrosion and stuff all over. It doesn't look too horrible. It's got one lifter here that's a little on the loose side. Now, I can't just slap it in and out, but it wiggles. It's not tight. It is on base circle, so it's not on the high point of the cam. The one right next to it's pretty tight. They're all fairly decent. Well, I want to make this motor. I don't know how many miles are on it. I don't know nothing about it. I had it pulled out of a truck that was in the pullet yard. So it cost me 175 to have it pulled, 320 for the motor. They add core charge and all kinds of stuff, but it came to 320 plus 175. So what's that? Almost 500 bucks, 495 I got in this motor. Now, I'm just taking things off. That don't sound bad. That one's noisy. The other ones are quiet. Water pump sounds, sounds okay. Feels tight. So I'm gonna pull this thing apart. I'm pulling off the hoses and stuff and they just cut, you know, they just, when they pull a motor, they just cut everything. So this wiring harness is junk to me. I'm gonna pull the intake manifold. I'm gonna pull things apart so I can inspect stuff. But so far, to me, this doesn't look too bad. We look fairly clean. I mean, I don't think it was super maintained because I do got some dirt down in here. The oil looks a little on the grungy side, so probably the last few uh, thousand miles or last 50,000 miles, they went ahead and didn't change the oil like they should have. It's a little black. But the big problem with these motors, from what I'm understanding from uh, Ford Tech Make You Loco. Anyway, I'm watching him. He's like, it's like going to college for these motors. So with any luck, this motor won't be too bad. You can see some varnish there by the lifter galleys and by the, you know, by the slack adjusters. Inside of the valve cover, pretty grungy. Seen worse, seen better. I sprayed PB Blast down in here. I hope that helps because I'll have to do the dreaded 5.4 spark plug change. Well, I've got her down this far. Intake manifold off. Both valve covers are off. Accessories are off, except for the AC pump, which I'll get to that. I guess I want to pull the front cover off next. I look stuff over. Now, it looks like the phasers are the old style phasers. So I'll be putting new phasers in. I'm not going to keep the old style. Also, on the, on the cam followers, I'm seeing none of them are really trashed. Okay, you see the big oiling hole right there? I pointed out right there. That's that oiling hole. So this, these are the old style giant hole, not as good as holding oil pressure lifters. So I guess I had to change them out too. I'm going to look things over closer, make sure nothing's really blowed up to this point. And then I'm going to pull the front cover off and uh, see what I find in there. And of course, to pull the front cover off, I'm going to have conflict with this. Um, I don't know if there's a bolt down in here. I'm sure there is behind this pulley. This pulley, there's conflict. So I pretty much got to pull off all the accessory pulleys and obviously the front damper. If I were to guess, I'd say this wasn't super taken care of because it's kind of dirty. See how dirty it is? And the cover, I mean, it's all sooted up pretty black. It doesn't have high buildup. It's, it's not, it's not like it's got scum or foam or anything like that all on it. It's just got a little bit of buildup there. And it's not like a scaly stuff. It doesn't fall off. It's just probably didn't have oil changes as often as possible. So that dirty oil leaves deposits. Now, what I've found so far is there's breakage here. That piece of uh, that black plastic is gone, but everything still has integrity. I mean, the chains are still snug. Uh, looks like these are still still pushing. I'll take them all apart. This is broken here. There's a broken spot in that uh, guide, just like this guide. So those plastic pieces must have gone down the pan. So eventually I'll, I'll be getting the pan off too. Um, but right now I'm looking at this and this is ugly manifold bolts. I can't even imagine taking this off in the vehicle. It took me forever to get the air conditioning. Uh, this bolt was stuck, terrible, so I heated up that whole air conditioning. It was stuck in the aluminum. You can see it, it's just so much corrosion in all this stuff. That's probably still hot, I just did it. But I heated, I heated this whole thing up, all that aluminum, because it was just corroded and stuck on the bolt. Other than that, I don't think this is gonna be a bad motor. I, I think it's, it's, I mean, these all seem okay. The original phasers seem okay. They are in the lock position, which is good, both of them. So I wasn't throwing codes for that, I don't believe. This didn't self-destruct. So as far as motors go, probably I put a timing kit in it. I bet the thing will get some more life. But I guess exhaust manifolds is my next step. 
Well, I'm going forward. I'm getting these little nuts off. There's not really much of a nut left by the time I take it off. But uh, this one here, what I've been doing is just using a different socket, whichever one will work. Hopefully this isn't the hot one I just used. It's pretty warm. 7 16 Crammed it on there as tight as I could. But first, a little bit of heat. Little map gas torches are, are really handy. I mean, I have a, a oxyacetylene over there. That I can use. Metric 12 on here. These are supposed to be 13. Goes on there pretty loose. Nope, just slipped. That one just slipping. So, let's see what we can do with a 7 16 Just keep descending in socket sizes till I get the right one, I guess. Alright, I don't think I'm hot enough. I'm going to add some more heat, then cram the socket on again, and see if I can get it. Alright, I got that stud. Pretty cherry. Hopefully the nut's pretty hot too. Must have swelled it up a bit. Bingo! I'm just glad it's not in the vehicle anymore. But what a nightmare. These things are a real pain in the neck. Yeah, the old 5.4 uh, exhaust manifolds, they get frozen on there pretty bad. So now I got four more to do on the bottom side. That'll be even trickier yet. <laughs> little needle scaler action on this block. It was all scaled up with all kinds of hanging rust and junk. Looks better now. It's not perfect. There's still some grime down there, but I got her cleaned up pretty good. It took me probably almost an hour to get these eight bolts out to get rid of this exhaust manifold, and now I'm going to start on the other side. I'm out of my barn today. I got tired of working in the dark, so check out what I got. Woo! It's like the sun. So it's a work lamp. Pretty neat. I mean, these fluorescent lights, they just blow all the time and they go out. Well, that's just a side issue, but check this out. Right now, I'm working on spark plugs. And these spark plugs, they're, they're kind of a neat thing. I mean, kind of neat like uh, hemorrhoids are neat or something like that. They're just awful. And they're a two-piece plug. They, I've got two still stuck in there. I got six of them out. But I thought we'd do a little experiment. I threw this in the vise and I wanted to see how much it took to break it loose. But you know, I got thinking, I'm going to put another one in the vise and put a torque wrench on it. Let's see how much torque it takes to actually shear off one of these and create that horrible problem that used to be referred to as an $1,100 spark plug job. But now we just call it a buy a Lyle tool for 80 bucks and it should extract it if you're lucky. So I don't have a Lyle tool. I'm hoping I get my other two plugs out. What I've done is, first thing I did was take it apart and let it soak overnight with PB Blast. Then I'm watching Ford Tech Make You Loco. They recommend, and Ford recommends, a carb cleaner. Now, he was using Ford carb cleaner, but all I have is this gum out stuff. But I think it's the same stuff. So it's supposed to eat the carbon up that's down in there, causing these spark plugs to hang up. 
Wait a minute, I think I got more than four. Oh, that's right, I got two of them loose, but I still got two that are really sticky. So I'm gonna make sure they're pretty good and lubed up. Of course, this isn't lubricant. It's supposed to eat the carbon. But let's go over to the vise and uh, let's, let's see what it takes to, to snap one of these off. So here we have it, one of the infamous spark plugs. It's the uh, 1.4 F Platinum, yeah. Anyway, so what'll happen is, I guess, and this is what I'm assuming, this will get carboned up, you unscrew the plug, and it, and it pops off from here. So let's see how much torque it takes. I'm going to throw it in my handy-dandy little vise here, see if I can get, get positioned so that we can uh, actually read a torque wrench. Ooh. So I've got it clamped in there tight enough. I've already broke the porcelain that's inside that part of that plug. Okay, so I got my beam-style torque wrench. I got it on there. Okay, just like as if you're taking it out of the vehicle, out of the motor. You guys watching a torque wrench? 30 pounds, it's in there, but it's just spinning now. So if this were in the head, that would be spinning and it would be pulling it up off the spark plug. The first one I did, it spun and I kept spinning it and it finally fell apart. So, and that's what would leave your thing stuck in the head. I guess the, the new ones are, are a one piece design. You can see where I squished it here and it broke that porcelain that's in there. That's why I could hear crack, cracking and crunching. Which means what? That means that porcelain's falling down into my cylinder. That's, that's great too. So, I don't, I, these are just not a great, they just were never a great design. So, we know we got 35 foot pounds before, before this cut loose. So I think I'm safe to use 35 foot-pounds over there on the thing. This is practical knowledge, maybe. I don't know. Let's go over and see if I can get those last two spark plugs out without uh, having disaster. All right, let's see. Let's see if I'm a winner. I'm on that spark plug. Now, I've already cranked it a quarter to a half a turn loose, hoping that that uh, carb cleaner would get down in there. So let's see what I got here. Going to 20. Oh, it's turning. It's below 20 foot-pounds, so I think I'm still safe. Now it's going up to 30. I think I want to work it back and forth a little bit. Oh, 30 foot pounds. I don't know, man. This one seems to be a problem. The other ones would all came out. I mean, all of except for well, there's two that didn't. Looks like this is gonna be a problem. There's still two of them stuck in here. Oh. It just went, just about getting 30. It feels like it's getting tighter. You know how you usually work a bolt back and forth? It feels like it's getting looser. This one feels like it's getting tighter. So I got the one over here. Let's see what this one does. Oh, this one's tighter yet. Plus it's making that crunchy noise. So that means I got one in each head, which means I couldn't even pull one head to fix my problem. So I've got two stuck ones. The other ones, there's a couple that came out pretty nice and easy. These don't seem to be doing that. Is there another way I can get in there and get some carb cleaner on it? Like, could I spray some carb cleaner up into the exhaust port? It's worth a shot, probably. It's worth a little bit of carb cleaner, and my intake valves are closed. All right, with the flashlight, right behind that valve stem, I can see the tip of the spark plug. I'm gonna see if I can spray some of that stuff in there on that tip. Maybe what I do is flip the motor upside down and spray it up good. Ooh, there's an idea. Well, I'm spraying carb cleaner up in there and it pretty much runs back out. But I'm hoping some of it's getting on that spark plug and keeping it wet. Well, it worked. I filled this uh, cylinder, actually I didn't fill it. I got the plug out but it would not come, it was just tight. So I cranked the motor over to the exhaust valve open and I sprayed a bunch of this carb cleaner, throttle body cleaner, into the cylinder. I'm gonna do it on this one now, cause this one's a problem. Spray a bunch of that in there. Now I'm gonna do what you're never supposed to do. I'm gonna crank it backwards until that exhaust valve closes again. And then I'm gonna flip it upside down so it's sitting there. Okay, so I sprayed it in there. It's in that cylinder and those valves are all closed now. The exhaust valves and the intake valve. So it should be holding that uh, carb cleaner right against that plug. It worked with the last one I was having trouble with. This is my, this is the last one to go. So let's see how that works. So went to a junkyard yesterday. We got some wheels for the Studebaker. Got four nice wheels at like 300 bucks. I think that was a good deal. 
So, getting a little bit of renewed vigor on a Studebaker. I want to get working on that again. Get the F-150 on the left and see if I can't get that motor in there and get that running. Have a truck to drive. Thanks for watching this video. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and we'll see you on the next one.